Number 28. Describe the molecular geometry and the hybridization of the nitrogen, phosphorus, or sulfur atoms in each of the following compounds. And then we have NH4NO3, which is ammonium nitrate, a fertilizer, and an explosive. Very interesting. So you could either put this on your lawn or shoot fireworks in the air. Interesting. Anyway, all we have to do is just find the molecular geometry and hybridization of specifically nitrogens because I don't have any phosphorus or sulfur atoms. So the first thing is, is whenever we're dealing with uh, molecular geometry or hybridization, the easiest way to go about this is to always write a Lewis structure. It is one more step, but I promise you, if you can visualize what's going on here, the geometry is easy peasy and so is the hybridization. Now we have a whole playlist on the channel just designated to drawing Lewis structures, which will give you the complete breakdown. This will kind of be a quick inversion um, because the new material here is that geometry and the hybridization. So let's go. Now NH4NO3 is a little tricky because going all the way back to chemistry, I can spot out that there are two polyatomic ions, right? I have ammonium which is NH4, and I have nitrate. If I have two polyatomic ions together, I got a plus and a minus, right? So I can break this apart. Technically, since I have a charge here, charges, right? One positive, one negative. It's an overall ionic compound. So I have to break up this ionic compound to get my two covalent molecules. So when we do that, NH4 always is a plus one charge, right? You could use your subscripts as well, right? You had one NH4 and one NO3. So we have NH4 positive and NO3 minus one. So now I have to do two Lewis structures. So let's work on the NH4 plus first. Center atom is going to be the nitrogen in this case, right? Hydrogen is never going to be the, um, the central atom because it can only make one bond. So I got nitrogen in the middle surrounded by four hydrogens. One, two, three, and four. And now let's just do the same thing for the other one, just so that we're working you know, at, on both compounds at a time. So in this case, least electronegative goes in the middle, always. Nitrogen is less electronegative than oxygen. So I'm going to have the nitrogen in the middle surrounded by three oxygens. And it doesn't matter, you know, if you put it on the bottom or on the top, the oxygens, I'm just going to put them on the sides and the bottom. All right. Um, yeah, let's, let's go with the bottom, right? Now we're going to put our valence electrons. Each hydrogen has one electron, one valence electron, so one, two, three, four. Each nitrogen has five valence electrons, so one, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five, I guess. And then the oxygen, for this case, has six valence electrons, so one, two, three, four, five, six. Did I say five? Oxygen has six valence electrons. Uh, so one, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five, six. All right. Now, in this case, we do have charges. And this is obviously a plus, whoop, this is a plus one, right? So we have to now deal with these charges before we single bond them up. A single bond, well, not a single bond, a plus charge, right? A plus one charge means that you lost one electron. As opposed to a negative one, that means that you gain one electron. Now, when you lose one electron, you usually lose it from the less electronegative element. But in this case, since you only have hydrogen and that only has one electron. I'm not going to strip away the one electron from the hydrogen. 
So I'm going to just strip away one from the nitrogen. And now nitrogen has four valence electrons. On the flip side, I have to show that this molecule gained one electron, and you generally put the one dot to the element that is more electronegative, which are the outer ones. And in this case, I'll just, I guess I'll just add it to the bottom. Now, let's single bond them up and see where we're at. Dot to dot is a single bond. Dot to dot, dot to dot, dot to dot, and dot to dot. So let's just check this one out first. But this is all good, right? Hydrogens are all good. They have one single bond. And the nitrogen is all good. Two, four, six, eight. It's got the octet. Since this has a charge, what I have to do is I just have to bracket it and put the charge in the upper right-hand corner, plus one. Now let's do dot to dot to do this one. And let me just pull, I guess I'll pull these down, right? We have dot to dot, so that's one single bond. Dot to dot, that's one single bond. Dot to dot, that's one single bond. Okay. This oxygen is not happy. Two, four, six, seven. It wants to have eight, right? It wants to have the octet. But I see that I have dot to dot, right? Another one available to do my double bond. And now this oxygen is happy. Two, four, six, eight electrons. Let's go down here. This oxygen has two, four, six, eight electrons. So I can't add any more bonds here. No single bond, right? Now, in this case, this oxygen, eh, not happy. Two, four, six, seven. So there comes a point here where I say, well, wait a minute. I have a dot here, and I have another dot here, right? Will this form a double bond? Well, that's good for the oxygen, but is it good for the nitrogen? Well, let's see. This nitrogen will now have two, four, six, eight, ten electrons. But the question is, can nitrogen have an expanded octet? Yeah, you got it. The answer is absolutely not. Nitrogen does not have access to d orbitals, so it cannot form a, um, a expanded octet more than eight electrons. So this double bond is not possible. But since oxygen is so electronegative, it's basically going to pull this electron that was from nitrogen to itself and say, hey, look, I now have a pair. <laughs> How greedy, right? But anyway, nitrogen's like, that works because nitrogen is has the eight electrons, two, four, six, eight, and this oxygen has now two, four, six, eight. So I guess a win-win, right? Uh, this is done. I just have to bracket it and put a negative one. So now I have my two compounds all ready to go. I got my Lewis structures. And now let's find the molecular geometry for each of them. Well, to find the molecular geometry, you probably are going to have to memorize this chart, right? I don't think your teacher or professor will give this to you on a test or quiz. So just use flashcards, do whatever you got to do to just memorize the different geometries that there are. Here, I'm going to try to work you through towards picking the right one. Now, we only care about the, sol um, the nitrogen, right? So that's the, the element in the middle. And what you're going to just take note is basically how many elements is it bound to? All you care about are elements and lone pairs. So this nitrogen has four hydrogens around it, right? One hydrogen, two hydrogens, three hydrogens, and four hydrogens. And on your chart, that's represented as X. So you're looking for a central atom, who is the A, bound to four X groups, right? In this case, it's the hydrogen. X is the general uh, letter. So, okay, maybe it could be this one, right? Does this nitrogen have any lone pairs? No, right? And does this central atom have any lone pairs? No. So this would be tetrahedral. Let's do the same thing for this nitrogen, right? Now let's see. I have A in the middle. And now how many elements is it bound to? Well, I got an oxygen. I have another oxygen. 
and I have another oxygen. So in this case, if I just actually can draw that, this would be AX4. Now what's going on here? I have the central atom, AX3, I have three oxygens, and no lone pairs. So I'm just looking for something that has an atom surrounded by three other elements, no uh, lone pairs, and that is this one. So this guy's geometry is trigonal, planar. All right. So now we can now find the geometry, which not the geometry, the hybridization, right? The hybridizations are now down here, ranging from sp all the way to sp3d2. Now just know that how many letters are in your hybridization corresponds to how many things. So two letters, two things, three letters, three things. If I just spell out the sp3, I have one s and three p's. That's what a p3 is. Total of four letters. That's a total of four things. But just know what a thing is classified as, right? It's either a single bond or one whole double bond or one whole triple bond or a lone pair. Now we only care about the nitrogen. That's what this question was asking for. So what does nitrogen have in this uh, NH4 plus molecule? Well, it's got one single bond, that's one thing. Another single bond, that's two things. Another single bond, that's three things. And one more single bond, that's four things. No lone pairs, so four things, four letters, SP3. Now just know that any time that you do have a tetrahedral, any time that you have this line, tetrahedral, trigonal pyramidal, or bent, it's always going to be SP3 hybridized. Same thing goes for the nitrogen here, right? What's going on around the nitrogen? It's got one single bond, that's one thing. It's got another single bond, that's two things. And it's got one whole double bond, so that's a total of three things. Three things, three letters, sp2. And just know that the, two, the three line here, where your trigonal planar or your bent, those are always going to be sp2 hybridized. And now we are done. So tetrahedral, sp3 for the NH4 component. And trigonal planar, sp2, for the NO3 component. And that ends this lovely question. What'd you think? I hope this helped. Let me know in the comments. Love talking to you guys and just seeing how you guys are doing in your classes. Good luck on all your tests, not just in chemistry, but maybe if you're taking math or world history. Yikes, right? But good luck to you. And I hope that you have a great day. Let's keep studying hard. And I will talk to you in later lessons. Okay, bye-bye.